This week marks the 25th anniversary of Rainforest Rescue and the start of a year-long celebration of the rainforest and its protection, conservation and restoration. The Daintree is the oldest rainforest on earth and the Daintree, well, all of you would agree it's a pretty amazing place. There are heaps of unique and ancient species that live there and, uh, and nowhere else. So it is a gem. It is a true gem. Now, to uh, explain the progress of Rainforest Rescue and what's happening going forward is Mark Cox, the Communication Manager, and Sigrid Brandon, who is down as Conservation Land Labourer and Partnership Support. They join me in the studio now. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you, Paul. Uh, did I get your name right? It's Sigrid Wilkins, actually. Oh, oh, okay. All right. This came through as another one. So. Must be a mistake. Must be a typo. <laughs> um, now, okay, morning, guys. You, you two are... Well, first of all, both of you are kind of newbies uh, to Rainforest Rescue. You joined in 2022, Sigrid. I've been looking up your, your form. And, uh, Mark, you joined in uh, last year. That's right. So you're newbies to uh, Rainforest Rescue. You, but I see in your eye both of you glints <laughs> and you seem to be the moment you walked in here you're passionate so tell me first of all uh, Sigrid why did you join Rainforest Rescue? Uh, well I've just always had a lifelong passion for nature and the environment um, and my parents both sort of introduced me to that and as soon as I heard about Rainforest Rescue and what they do I <clears throat> instantly knew that I wanted to join and help out with the danger. And what about you Mark? Uh, similar to Sigrid, lifelong passion for nature, but uh, I spent a number of years down in Adelaide, similar to yourself, Paul. Yes, yes. And uh, we used to come up here on holiday a lot. And the, once I saw the Daintree, fell in love with the place and knew that it was a place that I wanted to help uh, make sure that future generations could see and experience. Yes. Well, co coming from Adelaide, uh, had you been to the Daintree Rainforest before? Had you come up as a as a tourist or an observer? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Was, we, we came up on holiday up here every year. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about you, Sigrid, first. Let's get an idea of, of where you came from. Where did you grow up? Uh, I'm actually from central Victoria, Bendigo. Right. Yep. And what, a, fa a farming family? or? Uh, no, just living in the suburbs in uh, in Bendigo. Yeah. And then uh, I lived in Melbourne for the past 10 years. Yes. At university, studying science. So what attracted you to Rainforest Rescue to come up to this part of the world to help? I've always been attracted to the far north um, and I was... I've always thought it was a beautiful area, and as soon as I came up to the Daintree, I saw it. It seemed so otherworldly and incredibly unique. I remember the first time I went into the Daintree, it was like an enchanted forest, isn't it? If you see it through the eyes of beauty and nature, it is like an enchanted forest, isn't it, uh, Mark? Yeah, it is. It's, it's beautiful. an incredibly special place. There's some amazing animals, birds, plants up there. There's a really great community as well, and I think that was the other thing that really attracted mm. me to, mm. to being up in the region, is there's some amazing people up here too who care a lot about uh, the world around them. And uh, where did you grow up? Where, did, where were you oh, born and grew up? Unfortunately, I'm a POM by trade. Oh, so yes. <laughs> an ex-POM, so... Whereabouts? Yeah, yeah, right about? in the middle of the country. So. And, and did you come across with your parents? Was that uh, the no, girl? No, no. My wife and I moved over here a number of years ago for a, yeah. for a bit of an adventure, and we've stayed here ever since. Yes. And, and you, your background uh, to why you want to travel to the north and into the rainforest? Yeah, of course. I used to work for the World Wildlife Fund a number of ah. years ago. So there's, you know, there's a definitely a direct link there. Uh, but we, we fell in love with the far north. It's, a, it's an incredible place. And, and as I said, the community up here, really welcoming, wanted to share the, the, the world around them with us. Fabulous. Now, yeah. I mentioned you've only been with the organisation for a little while, but there's been 25 years of Rescue Rainforest. What has Rescue Rainforest achieved in the past uh, quarter century and, and what, what are they doing as they go forward in 2024? Sure, Paul. Um, so Rainforest Rescue 25 years ago began to uh, protect areas that were unprotected in the Daintree uh, near to the National Park example uh, since then they've we've acquired 44 properties uh, you know areas of land uh, and with that as well planted over 300,000 trees to help restore the rainforest as well connected those pieces of land up to make wildlife corridors which allows all the the animals and the and the birds to move around a bit more easily 
as well. Um, so you know that's a, a pretty pretty good going in quarter of a century. We've also built the most productive uh, rainforest plant nursery in the far north as well, up in Cow Bay. Yes, we'll talk about that in a moment, but let me tackle you buying up blocks in mm. the Dane Tree. Now, are you planning on buying up the remaining blocks so that we see this pattern of, as, you, as you're buying up blocks, uh, the community up there will eventually disappear? Oh, crikey, no. I mean, that, that would be completely unsustainable as, as a way to do it. Um, there's, there's been a community in the Daintree before it was even known as the Daintree, you know, thousands of years ago. Well, that was so, the indigenous people. That's right. But yeah. what about the people who live up now and, yep. and, and have businesses in the Daintree? Yep. Um, are they have any reason to be scared you're buying up every single block and then there'll be nothing left and they'll be gone? No, no, that's not... stick to our five main wildlife corridors. Uh, just uh, repeat it, that again. What was that? We try and stick to our five main wildlife corridors within the sure, Daintree. Sure. Yeah. So we buy in those sort of con concentrated areas. Yeah. So there's there's no plans whatsoever to do that. And as I said, that would be completely unsustainable to be able to to achieve that. Why and would it be un unsustainable? <clears throat> well, for a start, it wouldn't allow a community to be there. You know, our, our plan is to allow a community is to be able to work alongside a community, protect the rainforest, but also allow there to be a, a vibrant community to, to be up there. People want to come and visit the place. People are running their businesses up there. People are, are, are using the land for their own needs. You know, there's mm. tea plantations yes. and things like that. Are yes. there fruit farms? You know, there's there's no reason why all of those things can't exist alongside each other. Mm, because there is one organisation here in the Doug Shire and the spiritual leader of that organisation said to my face, Paul, by the year dot, um, everybody will be out of the Dane Tree <laughs> and it, it will be returned to rainforest with no one going there, tourists or businesses being in the Dane Tree. Said that to my face. Wow. That's crazy, and we have no plan to shut the gate. It just wouldn't wouldn't be the right thing to do. And as I said, there is a, there is a community there that wants to, you know, live and thrive up there, and we we want to help support that. There's another organisation called the uh, Gondwana Rainforest Trust. Now they're floating around the Dane Tree. There's been quite a bit of controversy with them supposedly buying Lot 93 Cape Tribulation Road, uh, saying that they're buying it. Uh, there's money involved of 405,000 dollars have you anything to do with that trust that uh, rainforest trust no nothing whatsoever nothing. they're a totally different organization to us and probably have very different uh, plans and aspirations to what we have Ooh. so what uh, going forward if you could wave the magic wand now mm -hmm. what would you see the dane tree being Wow, that's a, a good mixture. Question. A mixture. Yeah, uh, exactly that. A mixture. You know, there is uh, some amazing uh, uh, protected areas up there. There's a there's a mix of habitat of high ground of lowlands, um, and then out into the mangroves and the reef. There is uh, a thriving. Uh, uh, regional community up there as well you know we want to make sure that they get the support they need we know there's been issues things like the road closures for example and you know that that's a that's something that needs to be addressed as well uh, and and the future really would be a, a great mix of all of those things things like tourists coming in and being able to contribute to the to the um, to the community as well you know, either by having experiences with with the people up there, or planting trees, mm -hmm. or whatever it yep. might be. So yeah, that that mix. I think it's got to be got to be like that. It's the only way it could work. We're talking with Mark and Sigrid from uh, the wonderful Rainforest Rescue, celebrating 25 years this year. And the whole, how will you celebrate the year? Um, you, you said the celebrations will last the year. In what ways do you do that? Sure. Uh, we have a number of activities planned throughout the year. Uh, coming up in May is our annual tree planting up uh, near Wonga Beach. And so that's going to be something we'd like to invite the entire mm -hmm. community along to. Yes. Uh, we'll be able to celebrate there. A bit of a festival vibe to that. We're extending our thanks to everybody who's been able to support us over the last 25 years as well. Um, we're going to be holding other activities where we can you know, engage with the community, get people involved, um, and, uh, and and offering up ways for people to learn more about the rainforest and understand its importance. 
You know, uh, have you? Uh, there are unique animals and creatures within the rainforest. What excites you when you, you see them? Do you a cassowary? Is that what excites you? What What is the uh, creature that excites? Either we love we love cassowaries. They're our favourite animal at Rainforest Rescue because they actually, uh, as they move around, they build the rainforest. So when they poo, they poo out seeds, and that sort of yeah. grows the rainforest. They're wonderful. I've never seen one in the wild. Have you? Yes, we've we've seen them a few times Mark? on our property. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, They're geez. an incredible thing to encounter. I'd love prehistoric. To. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I'm hoping I don't see them on the road because that's where they get run over that's and all right. that, and then that would involve paperwork that would last three <laughs> weeks. I don't wish to get involved in that, and nor do I want to kill this beautiful creature. Uh, but you don't. People have gone into the Daintree tourists that I know and say every time we go in, we want to see a cassowary, but we don't. Are you happy they don't? Look, in some ways, yes, they are incredibly shy creatures and, you know, they're used to being in the deep forest. And so when we see them out on the roads or somewhere like that, it's kind of unusual to, to do so. But it's also because their, their habitat that they're used to walking through to find food has been disrupted in some ways. But, you know, we need to be able to move around as well. So those encounters are, are really special when they do happen. How can the public help you guys do your wonderful work? Uh, well, you can go to our website, first of all, um, and you can donate to Rainforest Rescue and what we do. And you could also become a business partner as well. Um, I work in the business partnership side. What so. is that? What, is that business? Is that with businesses they go into partnerships? So it's a sponsorship sort of thing, is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's sort of businesses mm -hmm. donating money towards a particular thing like uh, planting trees or mm -hmm. helping mm -hmm. us with the protection of properties as well. Mm. Is there any businesses you'd like to give a plug that have helped you along the way locally? Local businesses, we've got Daintree Discovery Centre. They've been partners with us for a long time. Um, Hartley's is also another partner yes, with us. Yes, Hartley's. Yeah, yeah, they do some great work. Um, Daintree Eco Lodge as well. Yeah, oh, there's yes. a number over Daintree, the river that, yes. that, that do. So, yes. Yeah, and, and I guess that's another part of it, right, is the businesses and, the, and, and community coming together with a kind of a common cause. Sigrid, uh, Sigrid and uh, Mark are here from Rainforest Rescue. I just wanted to ask you about the Mossman Mill. Um, what, what went through your mind when you heard that sad news? Oh, it's devastating. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a key part of the community up here. Um, and, uh, and, and agriculture has been part of the community up here for a long time as well. Can you help in this area? Yeah, good question, Paul. I, I'd like to think we could. Uh, we, we, as I said, we have a very productive uh, nursery, plant nursery, over 150,000 trees a year. Uh, we, can, we can produce up there. So if people are interested in maybe restoring the, the land that they have, back into rainforest, then we could help with that. Uh, there are funds available as well, government funds where they can apply for and, and, and do so. But also, I guess, there's probably a conversation to be had about the future of, of, of the land up here and what's going to happen next. You've got it's a big, big question mark, It is right? a big question mark, but we've got to have some diversity here. Oh, we definitely. can't just throw, throw the hands up and say, look, uh, sugar cane was everything and we can't do any more. Uh, we're talking about also lots of wonderful tropical fruits that can, yeah. can be grown here. Uh, what was uh, like her uh, spices and all sorts of stuff yep. I think I think we just need to have a different mindset now the the, the cane farmers are probably going to go through a period of what the hell do we do we've never known anything else we're generations of of cane farmers but hey you've got to think outside the square now it's yep. 2024 and you've been dealt a pretty bad hand yeah totally yeah. agree with yeah. you there and I think that's it it's it's how do we innovate how do we work out what what's going to come next um, you know, it might well be that there are, there are other options that could, could use the mill, um, but, you know, we're, we're here as, as part of an alternative if people are interested. Mm. Here's a curly one for you. A new council have been elected. What's your message to the councillors and the new mayor? We'd love to chat. We'd love to, to speak with Lisa and, and the team and, and go, hey, what's the future looking like? You know, what, how, does, how does the region move on? It's been a really challenging 12 months you know the the floods the cyclone what's happening with the mill even the drop in tourism so we need to think about the future mm. as i said we're, we're we're a potential way to provide some kind of alternative to the future and i think as you mentioned paul it's going to be a real mixed future as well mm. i don't think there's going to be a silver bullet for this at all no microgrid your thoughts oh that's a that's a thorny one uh 
I think it. Well, it's, I, I hey, don't, it's, it's clean and green. Or, it, or do sure. You, or do you want millions of litres of uh, diesel spewed out? No, into that's the, a, that's a very fair point. I personally don't know enough about it to be able to give you a check concrete it out. answer on that. No, check yeah. it out because look, it's going underground. There's nothing going to be destroyed. Uh, it'll bring clean green energy to the and get rid of those terrible generators spewing out the the diesel. I know you don't want that pollution going into the yeah. Dane tree. Um, what do you think, Sigrid? Uh, I also can't really comment. I don't know enough about it. I think you need both to check on that because <laughs> so. I've done a lot of checking on this and um, nothing is going to be destroyed and it's going to be clean and green and involving solar and hydrogen and it'll bring power to the Dane tree and get rid of those rotten, stinking generators, <laughs> which, which I absolutely hate. Yeah. Ha um, uh, time's up, but I want you to tell me something that you don't walk away from here and say, oh, we didn't mention now's your time we just want to remind everyone again about our tree planting day it's may the 18th come yes. on down get your hands dirty and plant some trees with us and we'll we'll do some community announcements for that as well thanks uh, paul yep go awesome. on. yeah uh, look you can check out our website rainforestrescue.org.au for more information we're on facebook we're on instagram if you're on linkedin or youtube you can check us out there as well and if you want to email us direct info at rainforestrescue.org.au uh, and you can and have, a, have a chat with us. Thanks for coming in today. It was most enlightening. And please check on that microgrid. Will do. Please. Because next time I interview you, <laughs> I expect you to know about that. All right. Oh, God. Oh, it's like being back at school. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. And thanks for coming in. And, and happy 25th for Rainforest Rescue. You do a marvellous job. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>